This video is brought to you by The Build. For more videos related to architecture, the build environment, architectural education, and related topics, please subscribe to The Build by pressing the subscribe button. Please also like and share this video. Also, leave your valuable comment on anything you would like to see in the future videos. Let's begin. So, today's video will be talking about SPA Delhi, the admission process, the subjects to be taken, the examinations, the syllabus, the exam pattern, and the later on admission process. Let's begin. Why to choose SPA Delhi instead of other colleges? Choosing SP Delhi, it offers the students several distinct advantages. One of the most important is the reputation and the legacy that SP Delhi holds. It is one of the most prestigious institutions for architecture and planning in India, with a rich legacy of producing highly accomplished architects and planners. It provides quality of education to the students. It has the exceptional curriculum, which makes the student all-rounder. It has a good industry connection, which helps the student with ample opportunities for internship, workshops, and placement. It gives a good research opportunity to the students. The facilities that it provides, that are the laboratories, the libraries, and the other resources. And one of the most important is the alumni network. The alumni network of SPA Delhi is vast and influential, which provides the current students with mentorship opportunities, the industry insights, and a strong professional network. SPA Delhi provides cultural diversity and exposure. Being located in Delhi, SP offers exposure to diverse cultural and vibrant architectural heritage. Last but not the least, the international collaboration that SPA Delhi has. It has collaboration with several international universities and institutions, which offer students for exchange program, joint workshop, and global exposure. So basically, choosing SPA Delhi for architecture can provide a solid foundation and a rich educational experience to the student and excellent career prospect in the field of architecture and life. A brief about subject, exam, syllabus, and counseling. For students, after 10, to get into SPA Delhi, either for planning or architecture, a student must have 10 plus, after 10, it has, it should, they should have PCM with themselves, physics, chemistry, and math. Or a person can do a three year of diploma. The diploma can be in architecture, computer science, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, automobile engineering, or civil engineering. The most important thing in this is the compulsory subject, which is mathematics. Math is the compulsory subject. Talking about the exam, to get into a SPA, there's only one examination, which is JE means paper two for architecture and paper three for planning. So, to get into SPA Delhi, a student must give JE means the paper 2 and the paper 3. Talking briefly about the syllabus, math, physics, aptitude, drawing, and planning based questions. There are two bodies, JOSA and CSA. So basically, these two bodies conduct the counseling process to get into SPA. Or other colleges for architecture. We'll be talking about it in the later stages.
talking about the exam, the main paper is conducted to JEE, Joint Entrance Exam. The number of attempts that a person can give in a single year is two. First, the examination is conducted in January and the second attempt is in April. The notification comes approx in December for January paper and the second notification comes around start of February for the April attempt. If a student has done some mistake while filling up the form, they do provide a correction window for a certain period of time to change a certain things. Few things that can be changed, which are mobile number, email address, permanent address, present address, sometimes photography, sessions, or emergency contact details. The things that can be changed are exam cities, the medium, the medium of exams you want to give, it's in Hindi, English, or any other, educational qualification, and photography. Photographs. So basically, in this attempt, we in this year we have seen that. Basically, NATA did allow students to change the photograph because they had some issue in that, right? So, it depends on the NATA that they do give us notification if there is some important thing to be get changed. So, now talking about the exam pattern, the duration. So, basically, this exam is a computer based thread. While the math and the aptitudes are computer based. The drawing is a physical exam, which is give, in that three hours. The students are provided with a paper from the NATA itself, and we are supposed to complete the drawing in that given sheet. The duration is three hours and 3.5 hours. The so three hours just for architecture or the planning. But if you have taken architecture as well as planning both paper together, then the examination body gives you about half an hour to complete both the papers together. The reason is the section it has is aptitude, maths, drawing, and planning for the planners, right? So if you're taking planning, then you have planning this question, if you are taking architecture, you have drawing questions, right? So if you take both, the two sections are common, which is aptitude and maths. Only section that differs is drawing and planning. So for that reason, the body gives you about half an hour extra to complete both the papers together. This examination site is jmains.nta.nic.in. The course offered by SP Daily for undergrad is B Arc and B Plan. The time duration for architecture is five years, and for planning, it is four years. The total marks for a B Arc paper is 400, and also for planning, it is 400 total. In this slide, you can see that in the max, section one has 20 questions plus four for positive and negative if you have answered it wrong. In the second section, there are 10 questions out of which only five you are supposed to answer, for which if the answer is right or correct, it gives you plus four, or if your answer is wrong, it gives you minus one. All the questions are absolutely not necessary to be done. If you leave the question, it won't provide you any marks. But if you do it wrong, you'll have negative marking. For aptitude, you have 50 questions, plus four if you do it right, and negative one if you do it wrong. In the drawing section, consists of 100 marks. So basically, sometimes it gives you two questions, which you have to do. Or sometimes it comes like one in one question you have given or. It is an or question. Uh, for example, A, either you can do A or you can do the question B. And the, you might have a section C also to do. Even in planning this question, it has 100 marks. The total math is 100. So basically, if you take for math, it is 100 marks. 
aptitude is for 200 marks and drawing is for 100 marks. And also the planning based questions are for 100 marks. So if total if you see, we have 400 marks. Talking about the syllabus, maths. Maths has algebra, trigonometry, analytical geometry. Basically all the topics covered in 11 and 12. So whatever you will be preparing for J means paper 1, a similar pattern is followed in J means paper 2 and paper 3. The differential calculus, integral calculus, statistics, probability, and mathematical reasoning. For aptitude, there, is certain, there are different things like awareness of people, the places, the building. For example, who, uh, what is the material used in red port? And from where it's been imported, like a different, what are, what is the architecture style? You know, a few things about the architectural buildings and material, analytical reasoning, visualizing 3D dimensional objects, mathematical reasoning, drawing and design. When you talk about the drawing section, When we talk about the drawing section, we have conceptualizing things and visualization. Visualization, sketching, drawing of geometric and abstract patterns, the architectural awareness, creating composition, understanding of scale, which is important, understanding of scales and proportions, right? The memory based drawing and some design exercise. For drawing, you can pick up the PYQ, the past year questions, and you can try solving that. Try different type of drawing pattern and you'll be ready for it. For planning based questions, you have general knowledge and awareness. The planning questions, which have general principles of urban and regional planning, history of planning, and many more. You have map, map interpretation. And these, uh, Planning based question. In the question paper, you might be given a graph where you have to read the graph, and according to that given, in that given graph, you have to answer it. You know, you have to know how to calculate the area through a map, a certain simple thing like that. Drawing and designing, reasoning, and analytical skills. I hope you are clear about the syllabus pattern. Let's begin with the counseling process. So we have two bodies, which is JOSA and CSAP. Talking about JOSA, JOSA has total in total six rounds, one to six. In the beginning, we are supposed to give our preferential order for the colleges we want to get in. After that, in the in the very starting, JOSA conducts two mock rounds before the final mock round start, sorry, the final counseling process starts, we have two mock rounds, which are approximately similar to the final round because it gives approximately approximately that colleges that you might get. Okay, so make sure while you fill up the preferential orders for the college, you give it in a way so that, okay, if I get this in the final, I am really satisfied with that. Okay, so we'll understand it with an example. In the first, I have given SP Delhi. For the second, I have given X, third Y, and fourth Z. Let us assume in the very beginning, in the first round, I got the call it Z. I didn't get SP Delhi. Okay. So I have some options out of which we have freeze, freeze, and float. This is the option which finalize your seat. That okay, if I get Z in the first round, I got Z and I'm satisfied that okay, if I get if I'm into Z, I don't want other college, it's okay. Then you can put it into freeze. Okay. Or in the very starting, if you get SP Delhi, that even if you do float, it doesn't make sense, right? Because after that you don't have any college. So you only have the option to freeze it, okay, or you want to let it go, right? So if I put it on to float, what will happen that my this seat is booked, okay. But 
if in the later round if i get y college or x college my this seat the seat for the z college will get cancelled okay and i'll be given the x seat for example in the second round i got y and then again i put it on the slot and in the fifth i got x even after fifth i've given i've put it on slot so that if in the sixth round i get sp delhi i'll my preference order according to my preference order i want sp delhi so if i get it in the sixth round we'll get the sp delhi after that you have to freeze your seat and you have to give your passion to and all i hope you are clear with this talking about the csap right what the csap does uh, basically csap is a spot round okay so what does spot round mean that Josa is the initial one to take care of the counseling, and the CSAP is the last one. A seat is left in any of the colleges, which, for X Y Z reason, has not filled. Okay, the student might have dropped out, or there is possibility that the student didn't fill for that seat, or anything else. There are uh, many reserved seats and which is not filled. So that is known as spot round. which csap basically gives us the opportunity to take into the college okay but for this round there is no specific rank okay uh, it might be possible that a person with very high rank like if for example 5 6 7 might get into sp delhi with uh, a rank of 5 6 7 okay where even our rank of 23 has also been there reason being it's a spot round okay you applied for that seat and one spot was available so you get into that okay so this is a spot round uh one of the most important thing to talk about is here that josa takes your category rank okay when we talk about josa it takes your category rank okay while csap csap only takes your air doesn't matter from which uh, reserved category you belong if you if you are applying in csap only your all india rank will be taken in count okay i hope you are clear with this one so let's proceed further you will see the reserved seat matrix this is taken from the official website of spdelhi so when we talk about it what we see is that for architecture the og means other open journal okay it's open journal so for open we have 54 seats for sc we have 20 for sc for sc we have 10 for obc we have 36 for ews it has 30 in total there are 133 seats in architecture okay what is the star one we'll be talking about in next two to three minutes so talking about bachelor's planning for open there are 18 seats for sc there are 7 st3 obc 12 ews 4 in total for first year undergrad there are total 44 seats okay there are total 45 but whatever we have counted here this is 44 okay and for architecture for the first year we have 133 okay what is this one 
these seeds are basically for kashmiri migrants okay for the kashmir kashmiri students okay if you belong to that category uh, on the official website of sp delhi there are given forms you can fill you can fill that form and submit to the site to the institution to get the extra reservation or the scholarship you might get through that okay talking about uh, the pwd candidates there are total five reserve seats which are uh, counted in your category also okay so we have two seats reserved for the uh, children of defense or paramilitary uh, persons those who were killed or those who were permanently disabled uh, which happened during a war okay so the additional seats which are for foreign foreign nationals okay which is 10% for nri there are 3% and for piu they, they have 2% seats reserved okay which are not in these count i hope this is clear to all if you have any doubt do comment we'll try to clear it over there i hope you are clear with this one plus star one what is that two extra seats that two seats are being reserved for kashmiri students okay so talking about the previous year rank wise okay selections which are done in josa make sure it is in josa okay so for other general sorry for open general in the first round in year 2023 it was 127 what does this mean it, it means that in the first round the last rank to the general student it was given the last rank was 127 and till and later on going till sixth round basically traveling from first to second third fourth to sixth round the last rank which is 138 okay for open this is air okay cuz they uh, this is the rank they have so this is the air rank for general for open pwd candidate in the first round which is your category rank which is 14 and till you go to round 16 which is uh, sorry till round 6 which is 44 for ews the starting was 51 ended till 83 for obc it was 168 and till round 6 which was conducted by josa and this is your category rank which is 186 okay for sc for 78 and it went till 104 and for sc it was 23 and till round 6 it went till just 24 okay when you compare all these or 22 and 21 you will see that in year 2021 in the first round one the oh, the general student if the last rank was 212 and in the year 2023 it was 127 you can see the jump of rank right at the round 6 it went till 252 but in the year 2023 it was 138 was the last rank so josa even this one is to josa when you talk about obc obc in here from 288 it went till 186 from 216 it went till 168 From thirty six and forty two, it went to twenty three, twenty four. Even similarly, when you do a comparison from here, it was one seventy five till two zero four for open in the year twenty twenty two. You can see the difference, right? Within a year, the rank has jumped a lot. 
right? Even you can see here, OBC, EWS, SCA, in each and every category. So you have to improve the percentile. You have to give a lot of more effort. As you can see, the competitions are getting higher. So, now moving further. In for planning, you can see that in the round one in 2023, it's 205. Until round six, it was 330. Okay, then you go to 2021, it's 281 and 347. A bit of rank has changed. As compared to 2022, it was 137 and the round 6 was 230, right? For open PWD, the last year, 2023, it was 53. For EWS, it was 99. Till round 6, it went to 195. For OBC and CL, it was 141. And the last was 279. SC, it was 59, which means in the first round, the last rank for SC was 59, okay? Okay, and till round six, the last rank was 94. For SC, it was 29. When you go to 2022, for the general, it was 137, 230 for open, now, PWD, it was 25. For EWS, it was 61 till 142. OBC, it was 111 till 228. SC, it was 59 till 113. For ST, it was 23 till 78. Now, we'll look into CSAB, which is the spot round we were talking about, which is the, you can say, a last hope where a student can get into any of their desired college, whether if not just talking about SP Delhi, even for uh, Jamie's paper one and paper two and three also, it's same for everyone, right? So for CSAB, for open, you have 76. Okay, opening rank was 76 and the closing rank was 85. The EWS it was 148 and till last it was 123. All these data are taken from the actual website of CSAP. These are general neutral. If you want to see for a result, for, for example, for a girl, you can go to the CSAP. Okay, to the official website of CSAP, which, which is csap.nsa.in. You can go to that site and there you can click on to the previous year allotted rank and you can select the specific gender and you can look at through that also. Okay, this is round one for OBC, it was 599 and it will till 679 from opening rank till closing rank. Okay. These are AIR ranks, as I have mentioned it earlier also. In CSAP, AIR ranks are only taken, okay? For SC, you can see it's 2,700 till 3,200. And for SC, it was 9,059. In the round two, for EWS, the opening rank was 1,370. And for OBC, it was 6. 94 it went till 713 it doesn't mean see in the c's have round it might be possible that a person with a rank of for example it's maybe they have a rank of 200 okay and there are only two spots available and your rank is 200 and the next person rank is 579 
which is quite far okay but only you to have applied for these these two seats okay so that doesn't matter even if it uh, this person has 1000 okay you both will get the seat it doesn't it doesn't matter that you have 200 or that one has 1000 no if if there are only two contestant for these two seats you will only get the seat and for example another person with this rank has also applied but just because this one has 1000 and that one has 1001 you two will get the seat the the a and b will get the seat not the c okay just because you had two seats and these two ranks are have applied for this there might be many other ranks in between but they didn't apply for this seat so they won't get i hope you are clear with this one Cisa is the last option. Um, basically, don't wait for the Cisa round. But uh, basically, it's in the very last. It also gives you a mock round kind of a thing. So you can apply for that. It also has two rounds, and even for the process, there are similarly these freeze and float option. Okay. Even here, you will get to choose your preferred colleges. You have to give your preferential order for the college, and then only you'll be able to go for the further round. Uh, for the C step, the last year it was four thousand. It's this piece is separate from JOSA because both the bodies are different. Okay, JOSA have a different fee, and C step has a different fee because both are different body. But basically, both are doing the same job. Okay. This is same for the planners for open journal. You can see it's two one six. Sorry, it's for the these twenty twenty two is for the architecture students, and this twenty twenty three is for the planners. You can pause the video and you can look at two. The table. Now talking about the actual admission process, which SP Delhi takes. So we'll be talking briefly about the reporting day, the hostel allotment and mess, the important information. Okay, so. Proceeding further, there is one thing I would like to share that what if you don't get SPA Delhi? Okay, it's not any of that. It's end or anything. So if not SPA, then we have number of colleges that you can look up to. You can even give it in your preferential order if it's just for architecture. So we have. NIT Trichy, we have NIT Calicut, we have SBA Bhopal, we have SBA Vijayawada. We like these. Okay, then we have M N I T Jaipur, which is basically a N I T. Okay, which is located in Jaipur, Malwa National Institute of Technology. Okay, N I T Trichy, N I T Calicut, which is located in Kerala, Kolkata, S B Bhopal, located in Bhopal, Vijayawada, which is located in Andhra Pradesh. And MNIT Jaipur, basically in Rajasthan, you can look up to these colleges, which are another. You can have a option. Ah, uh, if you don't 
get the options for SPA Delhi, these are a few options that you can look up on. So talking about the reporting day, obviously you this information will be provided to you on the official website of SP, which is sp.sp.in. Okay, so when you go to the SP website, you'll be given the name and your name will be specified to the specific date that, uh, for example, you have 30 students. Uh, the group of 10 to students will be divided in three or a group of 15 students divided in two will be asked to report in the college on a different day. Okay. So on that day, the documentations, which is most important documentation that uh, needs to be taken, uh, which is your migration certificate. Okay. Then you have your 12th mark sheet, your Aadhaar card plus PC, means your photo photocopy. Okay. So whenever you take your original certificates, make sure you beforehand you take the photocopy. Although uh, on both the campus, like in SP has two campus nearby, uh, one is planning and the other one is architecture. Okay. So on in both the campus, you have a printing shop but it's better if you take it because on that day you have a lot of rush so make sure you have your migration certificate with yourself uh 12th mark sheet aadhar card photocopy your category certificate if you have if you are in a reserved seat reserved category basically so make sure you take your category certificate if you are a ews person make sure you take your ews certificate and extra photographs okay and on that day, you will be asked to fill up the form for anti-ragging and harassment form, which is need to be submitted over there, and an anti-drug form. Okay, so these few things will be asked on that day. Okay, one more important thing, which is gap certificate. If you are a dropper, okay, then you have to take a gap certificate. You can get it from your local you know, advisor like the legal advisors, uh, the lawyers or from them, you can consult about it. They'll help you regarding this. So you can take it. A uh, few of the times they have asked for it and there are times that they didn't ask. So all those who are a dropper, they can take a gap certificate with themselves, which basically tells that uh, within the gap year, you were not in any other institutions or something you are actually preparing for this particular exam to get into this college, okay, or any. So talking about hostel and mess, uh, so everyone doesn't get hostel when you come to SPA. No, you don't get caught, uh, hostel. Everyone doesn't get a hostel. So this is basically merit-based. Uh, so these are divided into... For example, a few seats are reserved for general candidates. A few seats are reserved for the reserve category. For example, OBC, SC, SC, PWD, EWS. Okay. The, this hostel is located in ITU. The campus itself. So basically, in the planning block, the hostel is located. Okay. And all the boys and the girls, both are accommodated in, in the planning, basically, in this hostel, ITU hostel. Both have different areas to live. They have separate uh, hostel for boys and girls. All those who didn't, don't get the hostel, they can uh, live in Kotla, which is uh, the which is the place behind your architecture block, which is uh, from the architecture block, which is about one kilometers or five hundred meters. Okay. You can live in Kotla or you can live in PG, which is easily available in Lakshminagar, which is a nearby station, or, or Preet Vihar. You can stay in flat, like uh, two or three people can come together and take a flat and can live in Kotla. A lot of SP students do live there. 
you can take lakshmi nagar if you want uh lak uh, reasoning lakshmi nagar is a place where a lot of institutions works so you can get a lot pgs over there so yeah student don't get in the first year student don't get into maharani bag hostel okay so first year is in the id uh, this is the room you can see this is all the provide is for a single person a uh, almira bed a table and these shelves and in a single room two to three people can accommodate easily two are allotted and for the third person you can give a consent that okay we are okay with the third person and you can share your room there is a room form which will be given to you in the very beginning make sure you have a picture of that a uh, reason being when you exit your it hostel okay so every year you don't get into live in it hostel it's just for the first year when you go to second third fourth and fifth year you will be given into maharani bag hostel okay uh, which is approximately 8 meters far from the college so when you when your first year is over when you are vacating your it hostels a uh, room form again will be given to you so in that uh, whatever number of furniture you have uh, given in the first while you enter the hostel and if it doesn't match they are going to fine they going to take a fine from you so make sure you uh, fill the exact things you have you can put extra uh, for example if i have a bed if i put two chairs it's okay in the starting i had one chair but in the end i have two chairs it's okay but there shouldn't be anything less it will they'll cost you uh, they'll have you'll have to pay a fine in the fifth year you won't get to know in the initial you'll get to know in the last uh, talking about the mess in the mess uh, basically you have partial fee payment so you have total 40000 okay so talking about the fees approximately 40000 is for mess uh out of which 5000 or 6000 something is for uh basically that is a initial fee that's uh they take it in the uh, beginning and when you are when you have completed your course they do retirement okay the 20000 then is for mess establishment fees across 15 to 17000 and the rest is for your food which is a partial fees it doesn't mean your total fees okay after your first year is done whatever the fee is left will be taken when you when you uh, again take the admission for the second year it will they'll ask you to pay in that if you don't you'll have to give a fine in the later period when you will in your college in the fifth year okay so basically for example what does this mean if you give 5 rupees for your sheet okay uh, for example if you five, give 5 rupees for your chapati it doesn't mean that the chapati cost 5 rupees okay uh, for example you have eaten three chapati means uh, three days you have eaten chapatis okay and it has costed you for example one is for 10 rupees so it has cost you total 30 but you have paid how much 5 rupees right so in the end what will they ask you to give this 30 minus 5 which is 25 okay so this is the partial fee that they have taken in the initial okay that we they have give, uh, that we have given some partial fee to the spa authorities and whatever is left will be paid later on so 40000 mess fees is not for the whole year okay i hope you are clear with this thing uh there are many other things like sports facilities and athletics and nasa which we can cover in other thing but which is one of the most important thing that sp provides to the student for the growth which is nasa and north plan nasa is for students of architecture which is national association for students okay of architecture and the north plan is for basically the planning students Let us talk a bit about the fee structure. 
we will be looking into the fees that SPA has. Okay, so now when we talk about the fee structure, we can see for the general category, we have 40,000 for the first semester, for the third semester, and the later on. Okay, for the undergrad, for the SESD category, there is 20,000 per semester. The 40,000 fees is for per semester, not for the whole year. Okay, the enrollment fees is 5,000, which is a one time payment only. Okay, and the registration fee is 1,000, which is taken in basically the starting of each year. Okay, you can see in the first semester, third semester, fifth semester, all the odd semester, basically, which are the starting of the year. Second semester, we don't have any registration fees. For academic support, we have 5,000 in each and every semester. For the student activity, which are for games, association fees, magazine, NASA, NOS plan, which is 2,600 for each and every semester. Student aid fund, which is 400 only at the starting of the year. Then we talk about the security deposit for the admission, which is refundable, which is taken at the very beginning for the starting just once, which is 20,000, which will be refunded in the later stages. And so for the hostel room rent, which is 8,000 per semester. Okay. I hope, so I hope you are clear with this. This is of year 2023. Thanks for watching the build. Please also like and share this video. Also leave your valuable comment on anything you would like to see in the future videos. Make sure to subscribe the build by pressing the subscribe button. Thank you. If yes.